Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about variables in JavaScript. A variable is basically just a special container that we can use inside of JavaScript to store specific values. We can store data inside of these little containers. And you'll see in a second that using a variable is a great way to keep track of your data and organize the data that you're using inside of your JavaScript programs. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can create a variable. Now, if you wanna create a variable, remember a variable is just storing a specific value. So I can use a keyword, VAR, and when I use this VAR word, this is a special word inside of JavaScript. So when you type out this word VAR, JavaScript knows that, okay, this person is trying to create a variable. And the first thing we need to do once we type out VAR is give this variable a name. So generally a variable is like a container and we wanna give that container a specific name so we can identify and so we know what it's holding. So I'll type VAR and I'm just gonna create a variable called phrase. So this will store like a specific phrase and in here I can pass uh, a value. So I'm gonna use this equal sign and in my case, I'm gonna be passing some text. And so generally we would call this a string. It's just like a string of characters or basically just any text that you would write out. So my phrase is gonna be to be or not to be. And whenever we're writing a JavaScript line, we at the end, when we're done, we wanna put a semicolon. And this just tells JavaScript that, okay, we're done creating our variable or we're done with this specific command. So now this phrase variable actually contains the value to be or not to be. This is a string variable. So it's storing a string, which is this text over here. So if I was to come down to this document.write command, inside of here, I can pass this phrase and now what this will do is it'll print out to be or not to be in other words it'll print out the value that's stored inside of this phrase variable to the screen so over here when i refresh the page you'll see that it prints out to be or not to be so if i was to change this to be in not to be now it would modify on the screen so i could just modify this variable up here and it'll change down here one of the cool things about a variable is that I can use it in multiple places. So if I wanted, I could print this out like a bunch of different times. So I could print this out five times, right? Just like that. And I'll print it out to the screen. You'll see that it's getting printed out five times. But if I wanted, I could actually change this variable. So normally if I was just like putting regular text inside of here, if I wasn't referring to this variable, I would have to go through to each one of these document.write commands and change the text. But because we're using a variable, if I wanted to change this, all I would have to do would be change it up here. So instead of typing out to be or not to be, I could just type out like my name. So we could type out Mike. So now it'll print out Mike a bunch of times. And I was able to change what got printed out by just changing this up here in one place. And that's one of the benefits of using variables is that you can define a value and store it inside of a container. And then when you wanna change that value, you only have to change it in one spot. So if I was using this phrase variable like a hundred different times in my JavaScript file and I wanted to change it, I could just change it up here and it would automatically update in all of those 100 places. Another thing you can do with variables is you can modify them. So I could come down here and let's say after this second document.write, I wanted to change the value of the variable. Well, I can actually assign it a different value. So I could say phrase is equal to, and now I can give it a different value. So instead of saying my name, I could say like a fruit. So I could say like apple. And what you'll see is halfway through, this variable is gonna change value. So for these first two document.writes, it's printing out Mike, and then it's printing out Mike again. But I then changed the phrase, I changed the value of the variable to apple. And so now over here, it's printing out apple three times. So you can actually do this as much as you want, right? Down here, I could change the phrase again and we could change it to orange. So a different fruit. And now you'll see that this will get updated on the web browser. So it's Mike, Mike, and then I change the value of the variable. So it's apple, apple, and then I change it again. And so now it's orange. 
So that's kind of like the basics of working with variables. And then, like I said, you can modify those variables throughout your JavaScript file and that'll change uh, what their value is. So up here, we're defining a string, right? So I have this variable called phrase and I'm giving it a string. In this case, it's a string with my name. But there's actually a bunch of other types of variables that we can create. And there's actually a, a bunch of different types of data inside of JavaScript. So I would refer to this over here as a particular data type. And in our case, this is the string data type. So the type of data that, that, that this phrase variable is holding is a text string. But we can also store other things. For example, I could store like a number. So if I said var age is equal to 23, now inside of this, age variable, I'm storing a number, I'm storing a 23. So because this isn't inside of these quotation marks and because I'm using numbers, this is storing a number. I could also use like decimal numbers. So I could have another one like GPA and I could set this equal to like 3.1 or something. So instead of just putting a whole number, I'm using a number with a decimal after it. And JavaScript actually doesn't care if you use decimals or not. So I could make this 23.0 and it doesn't matter to JavaScript. Like JavaScript deals with like uh, whole numbers like this and decimal numbers like this the same way. And if you've ever used another programming language, sometimes they give a hassle like if using decimal numbers versus whole numbers, but JavaScript uh, doesn't care about that. Another type of variable we can use is a true false variable. So a lot of times you're going to want to store a true or false data and we would call this a Boolean data type. So I can make a variable and we'll call it like is male and we can give this a value of true or false. So a Boolean variable can only have two possible values, either true or false. So in my case, I am a male, so I could say true. But if I wasn't a male, then I could say false. And so this variable is now representing the value of, you know, whether or not I'm a male. And that brings me to another point, which is when you're creating these variables, you want to make sure that you use descriptive names. Um, a lot of times in programming, you'll see people who make variables. It'll just be like var a is equal to 23. But when I make a very variable called var a, that doesn't give me any information, right? It's just a letter. And sometimes people will do this to like save space or they're just too lazy to write something out. But generally when you're creating a variable, you want to give it a descriptive name. Uh, here's a good example. Imagine you were like moving out of your house, right? And you're packing up everything into boxes. The best way to do it would be to write on the outside of those boxes, like what's inside the boxes, right? So you can say like, this box has this, 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 and this inside of it. So that way when you get to the new house, it's really easy to figure out where everything has to go because you've labeled the boxes really well. That's the idea with a variable. Like these are containers. We're storing values inside of these containers. So we want to give them good names so that we can access them later. So these are the core data types in JavaScript. We have strings, we have numbers just like this, and we also have Boolean values. And I also want to point out with strings, in addition to using double quotes, you could also use single quotes like this. JavaScript doesn't care if you use double or single quotes. Uh, different developers will have different preferences, but uh, JavaScript will deal with single and double quotes the same way. But in addition to these uh, basically three core data types, there's also two other data types that you'll encounter when you're using JavaScript. And the first is called null. So if I made a variable, maybe we could call it like flaws. Um, I could give this a value of null. And basically what null means is that this variable has no value. So we're like going out of our way to specify that this variable is going to have no value whatsoever. And you're going to see sometimes in JavaScript variables will be null. Um, and there's another data type, which would be like, we could put like, description here, whatever. And this is called undefined. And so sometimes in JavaScript, you'll encounter variables that are undefined. And basically what this means is that the variable doesn't have a value yet. So basically it means that we haven't given this variable a value. Um, and undefined is different from null because when you define a variable as null, you're giving it a definition. Like you're defining the variable. You'll, you're saying like this variable has no value. Undefined doesn't mean that it has no value. It just means that it hasn't been defined yet. So it's like, 
it's open to the possibility of like having a value. It's really just like hasn't been touched yet, so it hasn't been defined yet. So that's kind of the difference between these two. Um, you're probably not gonna be like using these too much, but you will see them when you're working with your JavaScript code. Um, but like I said, for the most part, if you're making variables, you're gonna be using uh, either strings, numbers, or Booleans. That's kind of like the core data types in JavaScript. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.